Well, hello everyone. It's me out fishing again. And this is the first trip for well, just over three weeks. The weather has been absolutely appalling for the past three weeks. It just seems to be improving a bit now. It's still not warm, but not, nothing like as cold as it was. But rain, snow, sleet, gales, severe frosts. So I'm expecting that we'll have knocked everything back quite severely. But I'm heading for some of my favourite pools on the upper stretch of the river. It's on the local river today. You probably managed to figure that out for yourself. And I'm rigged up with single dry fly. And I'm just going to look for some risers of the odd cast now and again and see how it goes. So once you get up to the river, you, you probably realise I'm taking a slightly different route in today. Avoid, I usually go up on the other side of the river there. It's a real lunar landscape with the cows. It's terrible to walk on. So we've got this lovely tarred road on this side. I don't know why I didn't use this before. Which will take me up to the part of the river I want to be on. So anyway, I'll see you when I get up to my lucky pool and we'll take it from there. Well, this is the pool where two years in a row I've had two pound plus fish early season. Last time I was out, some of you who have uh, been watching the videos will maybe remember I've got a two and a quarter pounder just in there. It was a bit of a fluke. But uh, no sign of him moving at the moment. So what I'm going to do is go up to the corner here where it's a bit streamier and just have a, a couple of casts, just fish the water a bit. Not that I'm expecting much, I don't see any flies in the water. I was actually down here for a walk yesterday with a camera, just shooting some incidental footage with a, with a video camera. And there was a reasonable hatch olives around about this time, but there was nothing rising. I thought I might have saw one fish here out the corner of my eye as it was approaching, but I can't say for sure. So, we'll have a wee go up here and see how it goes. Just unseize the casting arm a bit, it's been doing nothing for three weeks. Right, we'll get into the river and get have a wee go here. Now I'm having a real problem seeing my fly, there's so much glare on the water. But there it is and it's floating okay. I'm using my old faithful Sage ZXL 9 foot 4 weight today, as I normally do. And I'm using one of Mike Barrio's GT90 Mark II lines, which is rather fine. But no sign of any risers. And it actually feels quite cold when I'm in the water now, so I'm not expecting much. I'm beginning to see the occasional olive coming down, dancing down. But nothing that you could really call a hatch. And when the wind is, what wind there is, which is really just a quite a gentle sea breeze coming off the North Sea, when it, when it dies down and the sun does come out, it actually feels quite pleasant. Yeah, a lot of flies there now, but still no fish. Yeah, that cold weather really seems to have knocked things back, unfortunately. But it happens every year. There's absolutely no reason to be surprised by it. It was even worse last year, actually. With a lot more snow in April last year. 
We'll have a wee wander up and see if there's anything new and further up. I was just thinking there that regular viewers might be getting a bit sick and tired of watching me flogging the same bits of water on the same river all the time. But uh, that's really only because it's so close and so handy. However, this very morning I arranged a season ticket for a, a river that I haven't fished for about 12 years. It's up in Aberdeenshire, closer to where I used to live, and it's not the dawn. Uh, I call it Boulder Creek because it's very, it's obviously not its proper name, but it's very bouldery and quite dangerous in some ways. Anyway, it's got a decent head of trout in it. Never had anything really big there, but it's a great water to fish, very varied water. So I'll be having a few trips up there this season. So watch out for Boulder Creek. I'm not going to tell you what its proper name is, I think the, the more observant of you will probably get a bit of fun out of figuring it out for yourself. It's not hard. So as I say, watch out for Boulder Creek. I'm going to cross the river here and wander up to the corner pool and see what's happening there. And then I might just do a bit of sitting around. How exciting, eh? <laughs> what well, I noticed yesterday when I was down here, that the, the San Martins are back. So that's the first of these swallow type birds I've seen this year. There's the colony up there, I'm pointing to it in that bank there. We'll have a, a closer look when we get up. Right, so there's the, the bank they nest in. Although I'm not seeing any birds flying around at the moment. They won't be nesting yet. They're probably starving of hunger. And desperately searching for some insects to eat. I guess this cold air doesn't encourage the insects to get out and about much. Well, I would say the height of this corner pool is just about perfect. Flow's fine, although the river is dropping. The flow's fine, the water's clear, but there's no sign of any fish at all. So I'll just watch it for a few minutes and have a couple of uh, speculative casts, as they say, and see how it goes. I'll wander up to the flat glide up beside that telegraph pole there, that uh, electricity pole rather. There might be a, the odd fish rising in there. I'll have a few casts in here anyway. Actually seeing them fly a lot better here with the light at that angle. Might have been better than them fishing, but frankly, I couldn't be bothered. I want to do a bit of visual, visual fishing, even if I don't catch anything. I was watching Chris Matthews' latest video this morning. He was fishing on Dartmoor. He had quite a, quite a few fish. Quite a good video, it's worth watching. <coughs> Look up Chris Matthews fly fishing on YouTube. Chris produces a good video, very similar to the stuff I produce. Yeah, Chris was saying he hadn't been out much. And one of the reasons was <coughs> DIY. There's some anglers say that the canis fly is the angler's curse. But I reckon DIY is the real one's <laughs> curse. <laughs> God, it's awful. Mind, mind numbing. But I guess some people like it. Yep, 
Yeah, so getting back to Boulder Creek, I guess I probably won't go up there for another month. Probably better to wait a bit into May. Because the river, I mean, it starts its journey towards the sea at around 4,000 feet above sea level. And it'll still be deep snow up there, so the water will still be absolutely freezing cold. Uh, having said that, there's probably a big hatch of March browns going on just, just as I speak, but whether any fish will be taken them or not is a different matter. So, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to getting back up to Boulder Creek. It's about a 50 mile drive for me, so it's not something that I'll be going twice a week, it'll just be occasionally. But if I can get half a dozen trips out of it over the season, it will uh, justify buying a, the season permit. Never meet anybody else fishing. It's, a, it's actually a salmon river. But uh, like most salmon rivers, it's got throughout the state, will issue trout permits and they're quite reasonably priced. So looking forward to that. So I'm just going to sit here for 10 minutes and watch the water and see if I can spot a riser to cast to. It just occurred to me actually, 12 years ago, I made a video up at Boulder Creek. And uh, was it 12 years ago? Yeah, it must have been 12 years ago. Up at Boulder Creek. It's called A Peaceful Place, and it's in the videos on YouTube. One of the first videos I ever made, certainly the first fishing video I ever made. So if you want to check that out, you can, if you can find it. It's called A Peaceful Place. Give you some idea what the river's like. And before they ask, no, I didn't catch a lot. <laughs> I did get one or two, but not a lot. Actually, the same year I made that peaceful place video up at Boulder Creek, a month or so prior to that, or must be two, two or three months prior to that, I fell when I was wading there. I had a real nasty accident, I ended up with a broken finger on my left hand. You can see it's been left permanently distorted. And as a, as a guitar player, that didn't help. <laughs> Maybe it helps you get to the more awkward chords, I don't know, but I've lost a lot of flexibility. Anyway, I can still play. As I always tell, tell everybody, before I broke that finger, I was just played just like Eric Clapton. <laughs> believe that of you well. So yeah, I was waiting and I broke that finger and I learned a valuable lesson. Prior to that I never used to bother with waiting staffs or waiting sticks. I do now. That was a painful lesson with a really bad fracture as you can see it never really healed properly. Well, there's so little happening up here, so I'll wander downstream, sit around for a while down there, and just watch water for signs of movement. But I'm going to get the feeling that it's not going to happen, so don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Right, I've just spotted the sand martens. They're up in these wires. Probably huddled together for warmth. There they go. Off they go. Great to see them again. Surely means spring isn't proper spring isn't that far off. I think the more southern bits of the UK are getting some warmer weather at the moment, but up here in the tundra, 
It's a different story. <laughs> So nothing hatching or rising. So I'm just going to fish up this long flat pool here. See if I can coax something up. Because to be honest, it's a bit cold to just be sitting around. It's just where I thought I saw a fish rise yesterday, just in here. But there's just nothing hatching at all. and all of coming down. <laughs> There's a large dark olive just floating past. Catch it. There we go. Large dark olive. It's the only, th the only thing I've managed to catch today so far. Back you go. But one olive a hatch does not make. Okay, so if you're still watching this video, it's two seconds forward for you and two days forward for me. I fished that last pool and then moved downstream a bit. And I sat in the bank watching the water and a huge herd of cows came by, waded straight into the river waded out in the middle and stood there watching me and they were thinking to themselves what the hell's he doing and I was thinking to myself what the hell are they doing and then I thought the better of it all and decided to call it a day I took that as a sign so anyway I packed up and decided to come back tomorrow so tomorrow came which is yesterday now came down to the river and it was absolutely Baltic miserable miserable day so they didn't stay so here I am again a bit further downstream rigged up same as yesterday or sorry same as two days ago with a single dry fly and I'll just go down see if we can find some risers Although it's not looking particularly for almost and again. Still got this cold easterly wind bringing in fog from the sea. And it feels, while not as cold as it was yesterday, still decidedly chilly. So, almost at the river now. I'm going to scope it out and see what happens. See you when I get down there. Well, I just had a quick look at one of my favourite pools up there. It's totally dead and there's a real raw wind coming up the river at this point. So what I'll do, rather than thrash the water there, time is it? Quarter past twelve. I'll have a wander down here to see what the conditions are like and then maybe go back up there in about an hour and uh, hopefully there'll be a few flies hatching by then. So in the meantime we'll get across the river and head downstream a wee bit. Now I've just seen what looks like a reasonable fish rising in this flat water here. So I'll get down below it and observe and maybe have a few casts over the top of it. It was twice it rose. First time I thought I was imagining it. well downstream of it and just watch it for a few minutes before I do anything. Right, let's just sit here for a few minutes and see. 
I'll switch it off now. Just switch it back on again if anything happens. But that fish has risen a few more times. And I've got to look at it and it's not very big. But beggars cannot be choosers. A fish is a fish. There's so much glare on the water, even with the Polaroids on, I can barely see what I'm doing. Ooh, that wind is cold. Oh, got it. Just a wee one. That fish is a fish, is a fish. go. Boy that's skinny. Just a wee wild trout but it's a skinny wee thing. Back you go. Okay so that has broken my duck. Talking of ducks I don't see any mallards around which is always a break. Right I'm gonna head back over and sit myself down on the bank again and just watch the water because targeting individual fish is probably gonna be the way to go. As I said, not a very big fish, but it's a fish. And the way things have been going over the past few weeks, I'm just glad to get something. Well, nothing else has moved in this pool. So what I'll do, I think, is just move up a wee bit. Just maybe work my way up this run here. Right, I'm going to have a wander further downstream. I have not be any further down than this for a, for a good few years. On this stretch, I mean, obviously, obviously been further down the river and fish further down the river, but on this stretch, this is as far as I've been tending to go. So I will go down, down to these trees at the bottom, see what, if there's anything happening down there, and then just have a wee wander back up, by which time this pool will be rested. There might be another fish or two rising here. We shall see, because... Uh, it's looking at first glance as any fish, any active fish seem to be in the, the slacker water, which is actually quite common early in the season when the water's cold. At least I think it is. Well, nothing doing down there, but I had an interesting chat with a guy who's working in the field there, he's planting carrots but his machine had <laughs> broken down he was waiting on the rescue services coming but anyway he's an angler as well and he was telling me he's been doing okay on the Tay and the Erich up by Blairgowrie had some nice trout and grayling, some good ones over the past couple of weeks. And that ties in with some of the other things I've been hearing. So another guy I know who is who was say uh, up fishing the tay. Oh at tay mouth. And he had some really nice fish. But sometimes the bigger rivers are less bothered with these wild temperature fluctuations we've been having. They're a bit more stable. Certainly, it knocked the fish in here on the head. And having said that, I'll probably meet somebody else who has been doing rather well on here, mainly because they've been bothered to come out when I haven't been. <laughs> As to say, you're not going to get any, you're not going to catch anything sitting at home. Right, this is a comfy wee seat I've got here. I'll just watch the water and see if anything develops. I could probably cast through here without even standing up. Right, we'll have a few casts in here. 
just met another angler there, Jock. We saw my car and came down to hear blether, so we blether with him. He's been finding things pretty slow himself this year. Just the odd fish showing. I haven't seen anything here yet, but... I'll just quickly fish up this. At least I can see my fly finding clearly here. Well guys, I'm going to knock this on the head now, I think. It's been a few days of pretty unremarkable fishing, to put it kindly. We really need some warm weather, and of course there's no panic about that, the season is yet young. So if you're still with us, then thanks for watching, and I hope you didn't find it too dull. Anyway, bye for now, and I hope to see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Bye.